Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about ketone body metabolism, also known as ketolysis. So in a previous lesson we talked about how ketone bodies are produced and where they're produced in the body. Now in this lesson we're going to talk about where in the body they're actually utilized. And we're going to also talk about the pathway that leads to the catabolism of ketone bodies to be used as a source of energy. To quickly review, the two major ketone bodies are beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate, with beta-hydroxybutyrate being by far the most abundant of the ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are produced in the liver during times of fasting and intense exercise. And they're produced from the beta-oxidation of fatty acids. And we talked about this in the ketogenesis lesson. Now again, ketone bodies are important as an energy source during fasting and prolonged exercise. And they're catabolized by peripheral tissues, the main ones being the brain and skeletal muscle. Now in normal fed conditions, the beta-hydroxybutyrate serum level is in a micromolar range. But as the time of fasting increases, we see that beta-hydroxybutyrate serum levels increase. At a 16-hour fast, we see beta-hydroxybutyrate serum levels at about a few hundred micromolars. But by a 48-hour fast, it's about 1 to 2 millimolar, and at a prolonged fast, it can be anywhere from 6 to 8 millimolar. Other interesting phenomenon that lead to increases in beta-hydroxybutyrate levels include intense exercise. Now, intense exercise for about 90 minutes can lead to a beta-hydroxybutyrate serum level of about 1 to 2 millimolar. So just 90 minutes of intense exercise can lead to similar levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate as a 48-hour starvation, which is pretty phenomenal. Now, the ketogenic diet is another instance where we see beta-hydroxybutyrate levels increase. And in fact, in a ketogenic diet, the levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate in the serum are actually consistently above 2 millimolar. So in a ketogenic diet, we see that because there are very few carbohydrates consumed, ketogenesis occurs at higher levels. So that's why we actually see a higher levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate in this type of diet. Now, as we mentioned before, ketogenesis occurs in the liver and it leads to the production of beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate. Now, we didn't talk about how these ketone bodies are actually transported out of the liver and into the bloodstream. And in fact, they are actually transported through a specific transporter, SLC16A6, and they're transported in the blood. So once the ketone bodies like beta-hydroxybutyrate are in the blood, how are they transported through the blood? Now, this has not been very well characterized at this point, but it is believed that because the ketone bodies have polar groups such as the hydroxyl groups, that they are sufficiently hydrophilic to just simply dissolve in the aqueous blood. So there may not be a need of a transport protein. Nevertheless, when the ketone bodies are transported throughout the blood, the two major sites or the two major peripheral tissues that utilize ketone bodies are the brain and the skeletal muscle. Now, with the skeletal muscle, it is believed that ketone bodies can simply pass through a plasma membrane through passive diffusion. But with the brain, because the brain has the blood-brain barrier and the brain itself is impermeable to things such as fatty acids, that ketone bodies require specific transporters, the monocarboxylate transporters or MCT1 and MCT2. Now, these transporters may be located in other peripheral tissues, but for the brain, it is highly likely that ketone bodies require these transporters to gain entry into the brain. Now, as a quick note, these transporters, MCT1 and MCT2, are also responsible for transporting pyruvate and lactate across membranes as well. Now, as we mentioned before, the two main peripheral tissues that utilize ketone bodies are the brain and skeletal muscle. So when the beta-hydroxybutyrate enters one of these peripheral tissues, it actually undergoes a reaction with beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase to form acetoacetate. Now, you may remember this enzyme because this was actually used in the production of beta-hydroxybutyrate as we've seen in the ketogenesis lesson. And in the process of metabolizing beta-hydroxybutyrate into acetoacetate, an NAD plus is reduced to an NADH. Now, 
the beta hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase step is a reversible step, which means that the direction this enzyme will actually go is under the control of how much NAD plus and NADH this cell might have. So in a cell that is low in NADH, this will favor the reaction from beta-hydroxybutyrate to acetyl acetate. So that is one of the reasons why we see in the peripheral tissues this reaction can go in the opposite direction as it did in the liver during ketogenesis. Now, we didn't talk about this before in the ketogenesis lecture, but this enzyme may be under the regulation of CERT3, which is a deacetylase. Now, again, we've mentioned before that acetoacetate can undergo a spontaneous degradation reaction to form acetone. And acetone can be exhaled in the breath. Now, this is just one of the ways that the body can remove and catabolize uh, ketone bodies through this mechanism of acetone generation. However, this is not very useful for a cell that may require energy. So by far the majority of the acetoacetate in peripheral tissues is catabolized to acetoacetyl-CoA via the enzyme succinyl-CoA 3 ketoacid coenzyme A transferase or OxyT1 or SCOT. So this enzyme is where the ketogenesis and ketolysis processes diverge. And in fact, this enzyme is utilized because it can bypass the HMG-CoA lyase step of the reaction. And because we see a succinyl-CoA in the name, in fact, succinyl-CoA is used. And it is used as a coenzyme A donor. And as you can see, the coenzyme A is actually added to the acetoacetate. And this actually leads to succinyl-CoA being produced or processed into succinate. Now, this enzyme step is the rate-limiting step in ketolysis. And you may be wondering, okay, why does this not occur? Why does ketolysis not occur in the liver and only in peripheral tissues? And it is in fact because the liver does not have this enzyme. So the way it is, is that the liver is only able to produce ketone bodies, but it is not able to utilize the ketone bodies because it does not have the OxyT1 enzyme. Now, once we have acetoacetyl-CoA, the acetoacetyl-CoA can be processed with the enzyme thiolase into 2-acetyl-CoA, which then can be used for the tricarboxylic acid cycle, which can then be used to produce NADH and FADH2 for energy production. So to summarize ketolysis, the oxidation of beta-hydroxybutyrate yields 26 moles of ATP, whereas the oxidation of acetoacetate yields 23 moles of ATP. So you might be wondering, okay, why is there more ATP generated from beta-hydroxybutyrate than acetoacetate? And it is because an NADH was also generated from beta-hydroxybutyrate. So during the beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase step, we remember that NAD plus was reduced to an NADH. Now the NADH can be also used in the electron transport chain to produce more ATP, around 2.5 ATP. So that's why we see a little bit more ATP being generated from beta-hydroxybutyrate. And one of the main reasons why the body utilizes ketones as an energy source is to actually spare glucose. And this leads to a reduced reliance on glucose. So if the brain and the skeletal muscle are not utilizing glucose, the glucose levels can be maintained in the bloodstream. And in fact, red blood cells are almost completely reliant on glucose. So this frees up glucose for their utilization. Anyways, guys, that was a quick lesson on ketolysis. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.